What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 356 of the Embodied Podcast. We are bringing interviews back into the fold for the fall, and I'm super excited to have AC Brown on the podcast today. AC's work is dedicated to illuminating the psychic, intuitive, and divine talents within you while inspiring you to consciously claim them and reroute your life in a way that feels lighter and more empowered at once. She is a psychic channel, a Pisces, and an emotional projector, and she helps map out ideas, concepts, and spiritual information in a way that eliminates confusion and any feelings of doubt or worthlessness. Her big thing is that you can return to feeling empowered and embodied in your being because she has witnessed it in her own personal transformations through her work. And our conversation was a complete exploration of all of that. We geeked out on things like, when did you know you were psychic? How do you hone and cultivate your psychic abilities? We talked about a lot of things going on in the world right now, how sometimes things go in the self-help, spirituality, and personal development industry, and all kinds of other things related to these deeper spiritual concepts, psychic abilities, and things that help us connect to our divine talents. It is a really fun conversation. I also hope you will go check out AC. My favorite place to follow her is on Instagram. So that's it. Let's get into the show. Yay. Hi, AC. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. So I always have an opening question. Um, This is the third iteration of the podcast. And now that it's called the Embodied Podcast, the first question I like to ask guests is, how is your body today? What is going on with your body? Oh, man, that's a good question. So I would say, I don't want to say so much. I will say that I had uh, some bad food choices yesterday. And so (laughs) my body is not in the best feeling. Um, Yeah. And what I mean by that is I could have made right food choices, but yesterday I just decided not to. I was feeling emotional. Yes. And I um, made a a food choice and then I took some Benadryl. I'm not going to sugarcoat that so I could go to sleep. And (laughs) so now my body is like, what the fuck? Excuse my language. (laughs) We're good. (laughs) It's like the series of choices, the things we do to then deal with the previous poor choice. I hear you. I feel like pandemic life is full of a lot of those for a lot of us. Yeah. It's been interesting. And I am really kind of evaluating a lot. I've been evaluating a lot over the last couple of months. It feels that I'm curious in, in your world and your practice, I know you have a lot of courses and you have this great Instagram following, and I'm sure you hear from a lot of people. It feels like since about June in my world, the word people keep using is liminal and liminality. Like, Mm -hmm having to release control at like proportions we've never seen before and just so much not not grounding so much in flux are you finding that also yeah and i do believe that had something to do with jupiter being in pisces as well Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and i've been trying to prepare people clients that i work with like hey, that feeling that you had a few weeks ago, that's going to be like that all next year. <laughs> like <laughs> kind of use this time now that Jupiter's back in Aquarius to like get some foundation together. And so when that, because the feeling of how June was and it just was like really, I don't know, I don't want to say it was shaky. It just felt unstable. Um energetically and I'm just like that's going to be a whole year of that of just feeling really dreamy airy fairy kind of thing oh man by the way if anyone's listening to this much later on this is we're talking June 2021 because that happens people might be it could be years from now and people are like what's true are what they talking about is this right I'm like what do they mean what yeah. do they mean so yeah June this this great <laughs> still in pandemic times you know we have the before times I've just been calling these the COVID times because we're certainly not at the after times yet no and hopefully we will get there if people do what they need to do do what they need to do is right. So I, I've been actually, I found you last year um, on Instagram and I love your stuff. I did one of your little mini courses that I think at the time it was on another platform, but I know you just updated your gorgeous website, acbrown.com. And it looks so amazing. Um, 
I was geeking out. I was going through all, all the different courses and things that you have over there. But the thing that I'm really excited to ask you about is this voice of truth. I want to know more about this. I want to know about if you always knew you were psychic, like the journey of claiming that and what that's been like for you. So that's the thread I want to tell. You can start wherever you want to start. Yeah, I always knew, but I didn't know. I knew something was off. (laughs) And what I mean by something was off, I knew at a very young age, and this always kind of comes, pops into my mind lately, is that when I was in like kindergarten, I think, Mm -hmm. um, I remember standing, um, I'm from New York, I'm from Queens. Um, I remember being like in New York's public schools, we would, um, you know, have playtime before we would go inside. So I remember it's either was in the morning or in the afternoon. I remember these girls were double dutching and I was looking at them And I remember a man coming next to me telling me to go and like give one of the girls like a hug. And I was just like, no, like I felt that feeling of like, and I was just like, "Uh, no. Um, And so that was one thing. And also too, like, I always knew like, no, like at my grandmother's house when I was over there, like who was calling. Yeah. I would always like have visions or talk about people who had passed in the family, Mm. those type of things. And then as I got older, I remember always being the person in, especially in junior high, high school, that I knew a lot about everyone. Like I knew when they were lying, when they weren't telling the truth, I knew that I had And I also was a dreamer and I discussed my dreams with my grandmother Mm -hmm. and we would like, you know, have conversations about that. So I always knew I didn't start saying that I'm psychic probably until like, yeah, like I would say high school because that's when I started like going to Barnes and Nobles and reading like, oh, that's what's happening. Nice. And so, or my grandmother would say she has the gift, but I was like, what the hell does that mean? Nice kind of thing. So that's how it was. So your family, so they understood that. So were you raised in any kind of religious environment or more spiritual oriented? Like, how is it that your grandmother was cool with, understood and was able to articulate that you had a gift? And my family, I was raised Catholic. I grew up on Staten Island. And yeah, so we were my grandmother's side of the family. Well, my grandfather and my grandmother, they were Catholic. And so, but when my grandmother... When my grandfather passed on, my grandmother started attending the Church of Unity um, in um, Rockefeller Center, I believe, where it was. Like they used to go to church like with Maya Angelou and all of that stuff and Eric Butterworth that when he was there preaching and stuff. And so my grandmother started getting really into, you know, the mind and kind of that was like the beginning of like law of attraction within the church kind of thing. And so- it was always like that. I don't, I, and that's so, f- the, when people ask me that, I don't remember not having, especially, you know, with the Catholic religion, not having some type of ritual, you know, we were always lighting candles for things. Yeah. That, that was, it was never like a, I don't remember like, you know, or my grandmother was like, you know, using bay leaves and certain hoodoo practices. Like I don't remember not having that life. That's cool. Yeah. I have, I've derived a lot from Catholicism. I no longer practice that, but ritual lighting candles, sacraments, there is so much ritual so in that religion. Much. <laughs> so much. One of the things I, I talk about a lot actually is how my mom used to get upset with me. She was basically like, you can't just cherry pick what you like about our religion. And I was like, but I'm going to, <laughs> right, right, right. this, this right. doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right. And like you, so I, it took me much longer to own, oh, I'm psychic. That's what's happening. Like, why do I know things? Why? And I was a very curious kid. And I realized much later that a lot of that curiosity stemmed from looking to confirm all these things I was feeling that didn't make Correct. any sense to me. Exactly. Yeah. 
Exactly. Especially when it, and I, I look back and I get not upset at myself. And it's so funny. I talked to my therapist about this is my therapist. Actually, she's very, she has divine talent. She is, um, you know, I would say clairvoyant and a medium and through her like training, she was of course taught. She had to like put that to the side yeah, because you can't bring stuff like, like that up in you know your therapy practice like that's unethical and all of that stuff so now she practices a little bit different but we talk about that how it's there is a part of me that still struggles to this day with having all of that information all the time and sometimes kind of I don't want to say psyching myself out but sometimes expecting a different answer or feeling about something or situation and kind of like, oh, but no, maybe it's, maybe I'm wrong. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) I really know what you mean. Cause in our heart of hearts in our human heart, we want to be wrong sometimes. (laughs) Correct. Um, But then you also have to look at like, yeah, what, what it is. So that's, that's, it's hard. It is hard, especially being, um, you know, a teenager and dating and like, you know, boys and all of that stuff. And it, yeah, it just didn't help. It does, not, it does not help. And, you know, for a really long time, and, you know, this is a really interesting thing about our culture being so therapized and having so much access to therapy and things like that. Now we're so analytical. And right. especially with, with, with meme culture online, we're all armchair astrologers, armchair therapists. Like we've all got a, enough to be dangerous in a lot of different things. And so it's really easy to analyze our way out of our intuition. Oh, easy, 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 easy. Um, but that, that's just never been true for me. I can't do that. Yeah. But before I was accepting that I am just like very psychic, I would, I would try to make sense of things. Recently, I've come to describing things as logical sense or intuitive sense rather than, or mystical sense, to be quite honest, which feels a little different to me. But to be like, yeah, some things fall under the different categories, which actually reminds me. So I was cruising around your new beautiful website and I love, love one of the things that you said I wrote it down here so I wouldn't forget. Um, You said you help people navigate the mystical map of their Mm -hmm. lifetime. What does that mean to you, the mystical map? What does that look like? So for me, what that means, because what I am good at is I'm I'm very, very amazing. I'm not going to downplay this. Nice. (laughs) Um, Good for you. I work well when people come to me and they are lost. They don't know which direction they're going Mm. and they are on some path and they just need a a, a point like go that way. And, or I work well with people who externally have a lot of great things happening, but internally their lives suck. Um, So the mystical map is more of about your direction in life, love, business, career, um, self, all of those things, the love of your body, the love of career, the love of self, the love of like all of those things and kind of helping people navigate where should they go next? Because Mm -hmm. we're always going north um, in my opinion. Um, But sometimes we start on our journey in the South or the East or the West. And mm-hmm. we sometimes have to go backwards to go North. Sometimes we have to jump around, but we're always going North. And so that's what the mystical map is. I love that. Um, I also am really curious. So we got a little bit of the history of how coming into your psychicness was I'm curious about channeling and I'm asking, this is one of the things I've always loved about having a podcast. I, I get to ask people really selfish questions about things that I am also currently navigating. <laughs> right. So for whatever reason, I've been so reluctant for all the years of my life that I've been doing this, which is really since about 2013, channeling. Mm, okay. I, I just, and you know what I think part of it is? There's so many like... The only word that comes to mind is charlatan, which just feels like such an old timey Mm. word, but there's so many people 
you know, who pretend or perform or, or do the spiritually superior thing because they can do stuff like that. But it really, most of us are channeling at least part of the time. I would say all of the time. I mean, people like famous producers are channelers, but they just channel the music. Right. Um, writers are channelers, um, but they just channel through their writing. It really depends. So for me, I started probably in high school with, I didn't have a word for it, but I knew that there was something talking to me and telling me things. Or when I would automatic write, I knew that wasn't me because some of the thoughts that I would have. Um, and so it's so funny that, um, um, what's her name? Uh, gosh, I can't, why am I like having trouble? Caroline Mace. Yes. Um, she says that our intuition is not young. Our intuition is old. Mm. So within, and when she, when I heard her say that, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense because as a child and having these psychic abilities and things like that, I always was very advanced. Yes. And so the consciousness was always advanced and the awareness was already al always advanced. So when she said that your intuition is not old, it's ancient. So mm. that's why when you're young and you're, you know, just trying to live your life. And that's how I knew that I was channeling because I would have a lot of these thoughts and this awareness that yes. wasn't where I was presently. Yeah, that was very right. advanced for me. I love this connection. I was just, I just started listening the other day to an audio with Carolyn Mace and Clarissa Pincola Estes. Yes, that's the one that I'm talking about. Yes. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And amazing. I loved one of the first distinctions they also made was the difference between instinct and intuition. Yes. I love these nuances because that was phenomenal. I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. And, and also those two, I was like, oh, they are, to, they're joining forces for something. Get me in on that. Yeah, they, it, that was a phenomenal recording. Hold on, phenomenal. let me pull. I'm actually going to pull up my Audible real quick, just so we can tell know, people the name of it, yeah, so that on, we can. Um, they I can look it up if they want to look it up. Listening to it, it is called Intuition and the Mystical Myst Life. Yes, Intuition and the Mystical Life. Love, yeah, I love that. And you know, I don't know if you're familiar with Tosha Silver, but she also talks about, um, you know, people who were older souls and people who were the younger souls in this lifetime and how some of these younger souls are the big, like the manifestors. These are like the 25 year olds we see that are like manifesting millions on the internet. And you're like, what? And like some of the older soul people are just like, I just want to commune with God y'all. <laughs> right, 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 right. And, and, and I don't think that there's, I mean, yes, there's a difference with old soul, new soul kind of thing. And it's so funny at when looking back at my dating life, because I, I, you know, that's a, you know, there's patterns there and all of that stuff. I was in a relationship with someone um, and I knew that they were a new soul mm. because of the way that they conducted themselves. Yeah. Same. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, you've, you really haven't been here before <laughs> because there was such, and it was nothing wrong with, I mean, we're not together, yeah, yeah. but there was a very big distinction about the way that they carry their lives. And yeah, it would always have a lot of drama and mistakes. And I'm just like, Hmm, this is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I started noticing that about people who I was dating and like, you know, where their souls were. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and I noticed when I dated new, new you know, older souls, um, and it was just very interesting. Like, Hmm, this is interesting. Cause sometimes I, I would date someone who was an older soul and they would be trying to kind of force themselves to have this, this freedom. And I'm like, but that's not you. So why are you forcing it? Yeah. And you know, but that's besides the point. <laughs> why would, I'm just curious, why would the freedom be a thing that wasn't was that specific to that person or to older souls? What's that connection? I don't know if it was, I think it was just specific to that person Okay, because cool. it was almost like they were forcing this freedom kind of like they didn't want to be tied down, Yeah, but then they acted in moments of someone who 
wanted to relax and feel safe and have yeah. security. Yeah. And it was almost like they were torn between just being, um, I don't want to say even complacent because that's not the go, just being comfortable and calm yeah. versus like, you know, being out in the streets, you know, trying to date and do all this stuff and have fun and all of that <laughs> yeah. stuff. It was just kind of like, that's not you. Yeah. This is one of the things that I love. So I know that you are moving much more towards being in your own space and being the voice of truth and doing those things. And you also, you know, have courses and you offer things for astrology and numerology and human design. And as you're saying this, one of the things that's coming up for me, so I have open Ajna and open head, and I also have open root. Okay. Oh, Okay. And I know, see, see, exactly. <laughs> There's this, there, a, kind of a couple of years ago, I realized that I just had to accept this persistent restlessness mm. that I just always feel. And I was yeah. like, if I just accept it and I don't make it wrong and I don't try to solve it, I wonder what would happen. Right. That and open then it, root is, whew. I know it's I, so I feel for y'all. I don't have I I have um a lot of openness, but I only have my spleen, my root and my emotional solar plex are defined. Mm. So everything else is open, but by completely open with no hanging gates or anything is my G center. So that's the identity one, right? Mm-hmm. So for anyone listening, you know, a lot of people who listen to this show are like armchair human design people. Like they'll, okay. they'll have, they'll have context for it. And so I don't want to dig into like basic human design stuff with you because people could easily go take one of your courses, get that, just scroll around on your Instagram, find that, or find that in any other array of places on the right. internet. Or my um, podcast for sure. Or her po- Like there's, there's so many resources um, for that, but yeah. I'm, so what made me think of that though, was as you were talking about this person, I, I always, I'm easily distracted and I get excited about things and then I have to come back. This is why I love things like human design, astrology, numerology, because they help with self-knowledge and self-awareness. Right. And I can catch myself exactly like what you were saying about that person being like, that's not me. It sounds right. real sexy, but I know I'm not built for that. <laughs> like, right. Right. Stop that. I need to like smack my own hand. Like, no, don't do it, girl. Right. Exactly. And so that's why it's, it. but you know, everybody's on their own journey and I can't like tell people what to do all the time. Exactly. <laughs> don't you want to though? <laughs> of course I want to, but you sort of have to let some people be who they are and they, they will come, they will come to their own kind of, they will acknowledge what is wrong. I don't want to say what's wrong. They will come to their own awareness when it's time for them to do so. Exactly. And like, and that's something. So one of the things that um, really bothers me so much about, you know, the current state of our culture is, you know, it's such a buzzword is cancel culture, but I want to, I want to not even cancel culture. It's just people's quickness to dismiss other whole human beings. Right. Like I, it's this, this unwillingness to tolerate or that's it's this intolerance or this lack of capacity to witness people on their journey is what it feels like in some cases. Yeah, I would say so. It just depends on the case. Yeah. You know, um, some people do need to be canceled. They do. And when, and when I mean canceled, not completely, but they need a timeout. Yeah. Maybe they should call it timeout culture. <laughs> timeout culture. <laughs> they just need a timeout, a, re- a reassessment um, a learning period, those type of things. Yes. You know, we had times up going for a while. Maybe we need to coin timeout culture. Maybe that's what it needs to be. Credit to you. Someone just needs a timeout. Cause (laughs) like you're on a timeout now. We we need to give you a timeout. We just don't need to hear from you for a while. Yeah. That probably would be better than actually canceling someone. Just give them a timeout, (laughs) let them go figure it out, learn, explore, and then come back. Totally. So I'm curious for a person like you, who's been psychic forever, um, who's comfortable with channeling and owning all of that. Um, how have things like astrology, numerology, human design, if they even have, I'm imagining they've helped you ground into the truth that actually comes through you, or is that not how? 
those tools have helped you? So the funny thing is, and I tell people all the time, cause they're like, Oh, are you, would you ever do a, you know, a training on like reading human design charts or something like that, which I have thought about, but for me, because I'm psychic, I see something completely different when I look at your chart Yep, and then other things come up. So it's kind of, I'm doing you a disservice actually by just showing you the basics, because for me, I don't see what you see. Mm -hmm. So I think that if anything, my talents, my divine talents of channeling and clairvoyance and clairaudience have brought something more to those tools that I use. Nice. Yeah. I can relate to this in the sense of, I work in the Akashic Records. I do Akashic Records readings. And, you know, I, I'm a person not like you who in my teens was like, yeah, I'm psychic. This is up. I really, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still now just in the last few years starting to like really own that and just be like, listen, and, but it's funny because people who've been coming to my events and workshops and things like that for so many years have been whispering to me forever. Like, you know, like, you know, you do this thing where you like look up into the corner of the room and then pull something out of nowhere. And we're all like, how did she know that? And I'm like, I know, but let's not make a big deal out of it. Um, <laughs> Cause I just don't ever want it to be about me or that I'm psych. Like, you know what I mean? Like I want, I want it to be focused on the person, not be about, cause you know how people can put you on pedestals and that, that always really bothers me. Yeah. I mean, but that's going to happen with this work anyway. Unavoidable. 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 But listen, unavoidable. I just, I tried to avoid it for a really long time. And finally I was like, all right, it's unavoidable. I just need to work with it. Right. So, um, but anyway, I noticed this. That's one of the reasons why I love working the Akashic Records, because then it's about working with your master's teachers and loved ones and not about me. But just like you just said, I started to realize, um, because this is one of the ways I got through the pandemic. I just did a ton of readings. I just got to mm. be with people. I stayed in connection with people by doing, I did like, I've done like 350 readings since the beginning of the pandemic last year. Oh, wow. That's a lot. It's a lot. And, um, but it became like undeniable, like how psychic I am. Because <laughs> I was like, right. oh, there's stuff coming through aside from the training I've done. Like there's, there's things that come through differently than what I was taught. And just accepting that. And I'm sharing this because I know like we have sensitive, our people are, we call them wild souls. The website is Untame Yourself. This is all about connecting your humanity with your divinity. All these conversations are to help people do that. And I know we have so many people who listen, who are probably nodding their heads and being like, oh, yes, me too. Well, I, everybody has divine talent. Everybody's psychic. So it's just about how you want to use it. People think that you have to do what I do. Oh, I have to figure out a career in the, in the spirituality space. Right. That's for me, not for you. You don't have to hang up a shingle and say, oh, I'm psychic. I'm giving readings now. You can use it in the corporate in corporate America. You can use it in your small business. You can use it wherever, or you can just use it just for your own personal life. You don't have to do anything front facing with it except for your own personal journey to, you know, just in, increase your skills and your awareness. So, but everyone has divine talents. Every everyone does. It's just about if you want to use them or tap into them or not. Um, yeah. And you know, this is something we always talk about in my community as well is like, you don't, you also don't have to, you know, cause some people are afraid of it or wouldn't accept or they're it would weird out their friends or family or whatever. But I'm curious, what's your take on if people just don't, if people don't acknowledge in my experience, denying it has consequences. Oh, absolutely. A ton of consequences. It starts, I mean, for a while, I, I tried to suppress it. So, and then it just didn't work because it was just undeniable. Like, I'm like, oh no, I'm going to do something else. And that's just not what happened for me. I mean, mm -hmm. denying it is conditioning um, you know, unfortunately, you know, we had the conversation about Catholicism. Religion is, can be very harmful. Mm -hmm. um, 
And many of us, especially, you know, black and brown and people of color, um, people, you know, have religious ties and religion says that this is bad. Yeah. And so that's why for me, um, it gives me a lot more security in my being and who I am that I want. I, I you know, I always say that I want to be who I needed when I was 15, yes. scouring yeah. Barnes and Nobles and not seeing anyone who looked like me mm-hmm. within these books and making it be okay. So, you know, religion plays a part and I'm not against religion, religion. I have roots and foundations in religion, but I I consider myself more spiritual, of course, but I do have a relationship with God. Um, And I think that many of us who have religious ties are afraid of the not getting into heaven and being wrong and all of these things that it was so like beat in us about that and you know oh it's witchcraft and it's this and it's that and it's just like you know I I always make a joke um what's the difference between me and a a psychic and a prophet um you know because because my personal uh belief is for especially for me being a channeler we get our information from the same place only one of us can quote bible verses quicker than the other that's totally that's literally it (laughs) yeah Yeah. I mean, that was, that was my thing. When I started to speak more about this stuff, my mom was super concerned that it was sacrilegious and that I was going to go to hell. And I'm like, but where do you think it's all coming from? This is all coming from God. It's all God. Call it, access it however you want to access it. Don't call it God, like call it whatever you want to call it. But if you need it, go get it. Right. Exactly. And so that's where it becomes a problem for people who want to explore or who want to start venturing off into different practices for their own personal kind of spirituality. Yeah. Um, This is actually how I found you, by the way, when you mentioned looking for a representation, because I was like, I really do love human design. We talk about it a lot. And I was like, I would, I need to find non-white human design people. I'm like, everyone's freaking, I had actually even signed up for a course. I think it was two summers ago. And no offense to our older white women listening, but you know how when people say no offense. So listen, I know you might be offended when I say this, <laughs> but basically the whole course was a bunch of like older white women. And I'm like, I can't, I didn't even make it through the first class. Like, and I'm not, I joke, I made up this phrase. It just came out of my mouth one day and all my friends who are not white laugh when I say, I'm not a full white. I'm Italian, <laughs> Puerto Rican mostly. And then my grandma on my mom's side was German and Irish. So like, there's just, and I'm also from New York and you know, New York is a whole different. It's different. It's just different. I, it's just different. And you grow up in a borough or the city, you grow up around all the people. It's very new. I always tell people who are, well, my New Yorkers understand, but New York is, is there racism? Yes. But New York is more of a classism place. Yep. It's not because if I'm black or you're Asian or Spanish or something like that, if we all live in the same building, we're the same. If we all live on the same block, we're the same. You can afford to live here. I can afford to live here. We're the same. So it's more, you know, my dad always grew up saying money talks, BS walks kind of thing. (laughs) Um, New York is more of a classism place of anything versus racism granted yes there's racist places and you know tons of all of that stuff but it's more classism if anything so when we talk about that and that's for me that's what kind of when I started venturing to into human design about 10 years ago I was just like well this doesn't work for me you know because a lot of the teachers and the mentors that I had were older white people. And I'm just like, well, of course, you you know, I'm a projector. Of course you can sit at home and wait for an invitation. Like, duh. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) I can't do that. I have to get out there and I have to like make it work for me. And I think that's why when people hear my podcast or people, you know, come to me, it's more relatable because I had to tweak the system for myself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. So can you say more about how you did that as a projector? Yeah. So for me, I mean, when I first found out about it, which be a 10, it was 10, 10 years as of July. Um, 
I started researching and then I had a reading and then I, you know, had a mentor and I was like, oh, I want to do this and, you know, bring this to people and all of that stuff. And then I started looking at things. I was just like, hmm, just doesn't make sense. Um, (laughs) And only and only because you had white women and white men who were older and just been like, yeah, you know, nope, you're supposed to wait. You shouldn't really be applying for jobs. One will just be presented to you. And I'm just like, that's not going to work for me though. Um, I'm going to have to apply. Yes. The invitation will be in the offer, but I'm still gonna have to apply. And I also have two generator parents. So I'm a little conditioned in that way as well. You know, my parents are like, Nope, you go out and get it. Do you think blah, 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 whatever. But also to being a projector and being a black woman, it was just like, I, what does waiting look like for me? Cause yes. waiting is not what it looks like for, you know, a white woman or a white man. Um, it has to be different for me. So I had to like figure out what that meant for me, what an invitation looked like for me, um, all of that. Granted, the premise is the same, but I have to make myself a little bit more visible mm-hmm. than most or unfortunately, and I'm sure that you see this in, um, you know, the community of spirituality, unfortunately, women of color and black women, especially, um, we probably have the most knowledge, but we have to show the most credentials. Mm -hmm. Um, other women, um, who are, who are non people of color, they can just open up shop. And then a few months later, they are where they need to be. This is really true. I lived in um, Southern California for a while. And when I was in North County, San Diego, and when I was in Los Angeles, I would bump into women like that who were like new, new on their path, but were trying to like sell programs and courses and things. And I'd be like, but wait, how, what about your experience? Like, what about your mastery? What about you? And what, what about your lineage? Of this? Yeah. What about your lineage? Your lineage, your teacher. Talk about that. Yeah. And, and, you know, okay. So this is something I would like to geek out on you with geek out on with you. We know that we are multidimensional beings that we have lived many lives and things like this. So this is, this is a complex and I think sometimes hard thing to talk about in this life and especially in this climate, because it's so important to acknowledge the very real systems and structures in our current life. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, I know people get really up in arms as they should about things like cultural appropriation. And then also there's just stuff that we remember because we've been here before. Correct. How do you navigate? What's your, tell me how you feel about all that. I mean, so like I said, you know, being in this iteration of my lifetimes as a black woman, um, knowing that I, my lineage is, you know, mostly, you know, black or a person of color. um, It is unfortunate that, um, and I talk about this with, you know, other people who look like me that we, we come here in this lifetime where it's backwards, where we have the, the ancestral like knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, even let's look at, and I talk about this with some of my South Asian friends, let's look at yoga. Um, a South Asian yogi has a hard time building a business in this country. Yeah. Which That's is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Travesty. Um, So when you look at that and you look at coaching and healing and, um, you know, psychic, all of these things or anything in the spiritual realm, my people who I call on my ancestors, who my grandmother taught me about, we use these practices for a very, very long time to help us survive. So now that in this day and age that it takes me longer to build a business having an actual tie and experience um, generationally with this stuff and someone else can just read a book and start, right. that's a problem. Yeah. But that's what, you know, 
that's what capitalism is. That's mm-hmm. what privilege is, you know, moving the goalpost. Um, that's what, how it is. There's nothing you can do about it. So, you know, not, I don't complain. It's just a fact. Yeah. How do you, how do you relate though to identities you've held in other lives or is that not something that you connect to? Oh Um, no, I connect to it a lot. It actually is why I, I mean, I know it, you know, I've done several past life regressions (laughs) um, and I've done, you know, Akashic readings and I know that that's where I struggled at here and with my business for a long time, because there were certain things that I had to get past and blocks and all of that stuff yeah. that I'm still trying to get past to step into more of my power. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my space is to be seen and to be a star. I mean, I have a Leo North node, so it's, there's no way around the direction. It's more about letting go of some of the blocks and the things that hold me back. Yeah. My North node, you know, it's funny. My North node is Gemini, but so is my Chiron and so is my rising. Oh, really? It's just so much friggin' Gemini. That's um, interesting. It is really interesting. And then I have my sun is Virgo and my Mercury is Virgo. So there's just like so much Mercury run stuff in my chart. And I'm like, this is why I'm insatiably curious. And I love having a podcast. I well, just want to my, talk about everything with everyone. My North node is in the ninth house. So it's in, you know, that's. Sagittarius so that ninth house that's what it's ruled by so it's that the knowledge and the philosophy and all of that stuff so I totally understand that yeah so this is I I love it's just a reminder and I talk about this all the time we're all just so complex right and one of the things that I'm always trying to remind people of and invite people to just be more present to on the show um, I took a long break from the show um, and I haven't been interviewing for over a year now oh wow Um, Yeah. Which was, I I just needed it. I needed a little reset. I needed a little, um, you know, the pandemic has been super challenging for everyone in their own ways. And I just needed some space, but, um, we need to be able to recognize as much as, as much effort as we put into honoring our own multidimensionality, being able to honor and recognize everyone else as multidimensional too. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like what we were saying earlier, like, yes, some people really need to be put in time out. Yeah. Because how they're using all of their things, their cocktail of identities and who they are and all this stuff is, is really harming a lot of other people. And then, but some people just along the way, we're just like kind of stumbling, figuring it out, trying to own it. Like you said, I like on your site too, you call it spiritual empowerment. Yeah. What does that mean to you? What is that? So why is me- that kind of like the umbrella? Because your spiritual life is your life. Mm. I can give you tools, tips, tricks, all of that stuff, point you in the right direction, but I want you to walk away empowered to have it for yourself, to hold on to the concepts and the things that you want to for yourself and be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like that's the whole journey that takes our whole friggin' lives. <laughs> right. It takes a long time to do that. Um, because this, when you start venturing off into the spiritual spirituality space, you there's a lot of fear there. What are people going to say? You know, I've had friends who are like whispering to me who are come from very religious backgrounds, like I have crystals like and it's just like, <laughs> OK, girl. you know what I mean? It's like, OK, girl, like, you know, well, what do I do with them? And I'm just like, oh, you can, tr-, you know, all this other stuff like I, I brought some sage, you know, and it's just like, OK. <laughs> cleanse your place. Like, don't, you know, it's just like a whole, like kind of secret. And it's just like, okay, you have crystals, you have sage, you know, cleanse them, but carry them in your purse, do whatever you're going to do with it. Um, you know, so it's more about empowering people to know, because I truly don't feel that religion is completely bad. No, I believe that the, the dogma is bad. Yes. The, you know, the, the bad stuff is bad, but you know, like I said, I have roots in, in religion. And so religion is not all the way bad. It's no. just about what, you know, you have to take the good from yeah. what you want from it. And that's with anything. That's, that's what anything. people do with it. You know, actually, you know, you mentioned Carolyn Mace, Mace earlier. I, I always, I mix up her name 
I think I say it differently every time I say it. I know, me too. Yes. <laughs> um, but her book, Anatomy of the Spirit, yes. that is what really bridged me into being able to start to develop my own relationship to spirituality because she tied together. I had just actually done my second Reiki attunement. This was like 2012. And then I came across that book and it, she draws analogies between the seven sacraments in Catholicism to the seven chakras, to the tree of life and the Kabbalah. And I was like, Oh, right. Like, Oh, okay. This makes sense. Oh, it's all the same. shit. It's all the, it's all the same. And I think that's where diehard Christians get on my nerves because they will, they will fight so much about that. It's not there. And it's just like, no, it's there. You know, even when it comes to astrology and religion, like, nope, that stuff is in the Bible. Like you, you didn't read right. (laughs) You didn't read it right. And so, you know, I think that's what makes me upset sometimes about religion that is so matter of fact and it's not room for other opinions and things like that and it's just like no there can be a different way yeah um so this is one of the things over the years nothing enrages me like someone telling you that what is so precious and sacred to you that really helps you get through the hardest times and the most miraculous times and be kind and loving with people is wrong. Right. Like wrong. That is the most, that's probably the hardest thing. So when you tell someone that, like you said, like it's got me through this, it helped me out. You know, even when I used to give readings, um, cause I don't give, you know, regular psychic readings or mediumship readings anymore. Um, I do more of channeled kind of readings. Um, and even that is more of sometimes it's really just confirmation mm-hmm. for the things that you already knew. Totally. Um, sometimes it's, you know, my guides are very, they're very interesting. They, they like to, you know, be a lot, a lot raw and uncut and give, give all the tea. Um, guys are also from Queens. <laughs> they, yes. They, some of them are from Queens for sure. Um, I think for me um, on my journey, what would happen is, and I had to get very, um, and in that same recording, Caroline Mace, um, she talks about how, and I've always adapted this kind of that, um, having your, you know, being psychic is more about self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of the journey for me because I would get so pissed off where I would give people information or I would hear stuff or see stuff. And then they were like, oh, that's wrong. And I would like, no, it's not. And then lo and behold, it would be, I'm telling you years later or months later, be like, oh my God, AC, you were so right. That happened. And I just (laughs) just roll my eyes. Like I know I was. And it, what, and it became... (laughs) And I had to stop doing that and be comfortable with like, okay, this person, whatever, however they take, I'm what, I don't need to prove to them that I'm right. I am just a vessel. Here's the information, do what it, what you want to do with it and call it a day. Yep. And I had, had to get confident in that. And that took a long time. I loved that point that she made too. She said, when you, when you are, when you have self esteem, you are more inclined to trust yourself. Right. Cause you're not, you're, you're not just having this overall experience of self-doubt. Well, how could that possibly be true? And right. you're willing to believe yourself. You're willing to trust yourself. You're willing to bet on yourself. I love right. that. And I noticed that when I did my, um, I, the training I got to read the Akashic records, I noticed that, um, First of all, I realized that I had always been working in the Akashic Records. Mm. I just didn't know that that's what I had been working with. Ah, okay. Um, You know, like when people say getting downloads, like there's so many in my body of work, I have a movement method called Wild Soul Movement and there's elements in Wild Soul Movement that exist in other modalities like Kundalini Yoga and somatic experiencing and things that I had never done. And people would be like, oh, do you have training in this? Oh, do you have training in this? And I'd be like, no, (laughs) you know, I just- Like I had this idea and it's not like, I always, I always want to give attribution. I want to give credit where it's due, but in this life, I have not done that. It just kind of like landed for me. 
Right. Or like you said, you remembered it. You remembered it. Or you just were like, oh, let me try this. How does that feel? Like, that's why my stuff is embodiment. And I think some of this has to do with having emotional authority. I have to feel everything. I have to feel it out, see if it works and then draw my conclusions. But um, I noticed in the training, people were like, well, how do I know if it's, if it's my thoughts or if it's my, you know, whatever. And they were doubting. And I realized like, oh, I have no doubt. Like they were like, how are you so confident? I was like, I don't know. Like I just, it's just coming. But that point I just hadn't realized until I heard her make that connection. Like, oh yeah. It's the doubt is probably the biggest hurdle to get by because you want to know what you what you're hearing what you're seeing and I'm like well you know I like I remember when I was doing a lot of mediumship training um and the way mediumship works for me is very different I don't see people and things like that all the time sometimes my ancestors come through for me or somebody comes through at night but for me, different things happen. I just had to be confident, like, oh, okay, that's just how it works for me. Okay, cool. So, you know, and being more, I had a, you know, teacher say to me, you know, and I never forget this. And this was a while ago. Um, you know, spirit can't waste time here. So when we think that it's a coincidence or something like that, that's spirit. That's some, you know, an ancestor, that's somebody trying to come through because it's not like they like come down in an elevator and then they press, you know, floor two. And then they walk up to your door and knock on them like, Hey, I have a message. They can't waste time when they're here. Yeah. So we have to kind of, you know, when I, when I do read people and things like that, you, I have to, be more aware of the things that do come in and write them down. Like, you know, if there's a siren that goes off, like, what does that mean? And mm, yeah, all of that stuff I, for me, um, when I was doing a lot of readings, how spirit would connect me with people is that they would give me the last like ailment that they had in their body. Oh, interesting. So, which was so annoying. So I would be meditating on the person and stuff. And then my back would start hurting or oh, no. my wrist would you start hurting. You give it to you. I oh, mean, yes. I no. thought you meant like they would just like tell you. No, you would no, feel I would it. No, I feel oh. it. So like I would be connecting with someone and then I would all of a sudden have a headache on my right hand side. And I'm like, hey, dude, did you just experience a headache on your right hand side? And they're like, oh, yeah, I suffer from migraines. I just had one yesterday. Or I had um, one lady where my, my right arm started hurting so bad. She just had like carpal tunnel surgery. Um, so stuff like that oh. would happen. Did yeah, you that's... negotiate that? Were you like, we need another way? Um, I didn't mind it because I knew that what information was going to come after that, I could mm -hmm. be more secure and confident in. Yeah, that's a great point. So the problem would be where... <laughs> I never forget this one lady and, and this is probably why one of the reasons why I stopped doing reading. So it's somebody messed it up for everyone um, is that I was giving like, you know, I was writing down all this information, all these things were happening. And then I had said to her, I said, did you recently have any back issues? And she's like, no. And I said, okay, okay. But my back kept hurting. And so as we're, you know, and I kept on giving her information, things she's like, mm -mm, that doesn't sound right. All of this stuff. And so I was like, okay, you're going to get the recording. And then I was like, so are you sure you haven't had any back issues? She was like, no, she's like, I went to the, I went to the chiropractor about a week and a half ago though. And I had a back issue a week and a half ago. And then I'm just like, I just asked you that. <laughs> like four times <laughs> during this 30 minutes and you literally told me no you didn't know what I was talking about maybe it was wrong and I'm just like I'm sitting there on the phone and I'm just like are you serious well was she's she like but she was like but that wasn't recently I said a week and a half is recent like and so that's where it get it starts getting where your self-confidence and your self-esteem kind of gets like kind of messed up because it's just like that's what's so freak? funny that is so funny you know do you I wonder was she did she feel like one of those people who like you know how sometimes people like want you to be wrong 
hands down. And it's just like, why did you come here? Right, right. That's probably the most. So anybody listening to this, when you go seek out spiritual counsel or guidance, it doesn't help that you don't want them to know anything or be right, that you're literally doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not only painful for you, but it's painful for the person who's reading you because now it's like, it's almost like you're weaponizing your, your visit with them. Like I'm going to prove myself wrong to you. And so that puts like little droplets of things in their mind mentally where it might get in the way from helping someone who comes open. Yeah. Yeah. It's all so complex, but so fascinating. I love this. Thank you. Thank you for letting me just, this is always my conversations though. I just bounce around because I get so excited about what, what wants to bubble up, what wants to bubble through. I often like to ask people, especially folks like you who are so dynamic and do so many different things, but that all connect and relate in one central way. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you were like, Ooh, I want to say this, or, Ooh, this feels really important based on the conversation. Um, well, I mean, you, I think we just went over, like we kind of skated by it, but I know you wanted to ask me something about the voice of truth. Oh, did you, was there more about that? Oh, I didn't know if we like really, I mean, that's just me channeling with my guides. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what I'll be doing more of, um, channeling with my guides. Hopefully it'll be some events, um, and things like that more channeled, you know, just events, products. Um, probably, um, a book, Mm. that kind of thing. So, um, I mean, for me, me being the voice of truth is really what I want to, you know, be known for, because that's where the, the talent is. That's where the gift is, um, that I'm embracing more and more. I love that. I love, like, that feels like such a amazing thing to own. Yeah. And and the thing is, it's not like you're out here saying like, this is universal truth. It's like, here's this truth. Take it. If it right. helps, if it resonates, take right. it. If not, <laughs> if not, keep it's it not your truth. That's fine. <laughs> you're, call, you're calling it the voice of truth, not the voice of the truth. <laughs> right. Voice of truth. Right. Exactly. Not the truth or the end all be all truth. Exactly. Yeah. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. So everyone go check out it's acbrown.com, A-Y-C-E-E-B-R-O-W-N.com. We will put links to all this in the show notes. This is going to be episode number 357. So anything we talked about, anything we mentioned, we'll all go on the show notes page. You can find AC on Instagram as well. Same at AC Brown. And by the way, I didn't double check, but I'm saying it right, right? Yeah, you're saying it right. Okay, just making, I'm like, I figured she would have corrected me if I wasn't. Yeah, I, no. Yeah, it's I usually check down. at the beginning. I forgot because I think I've heard you say it actually is probably why yeah. I didn't before because I've listened. I know I love, actually, let me just tell the people one more thing. Are you still doing the the um, the um little aura things weekly, the the notes for the auras or are you getting away from that? I'm getting away from that. It's best sure. to follow me on YouTube, but I'll be doing like voice of truth stuff. Um, okay. I might do... Um, the or affirmations and things like that, you know, every once in a while. It's all right. We got to move on when yeah. we're complete with something. We got to move on for the time that they existed. I really loved those. So thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, AC. Everyone go check her out. Uh, again, your website is just so clear. It's so easy to find everything that you do. It's so easy to just explore and pick a thing if people are excited about something. So I hope they will all go do that. Thank you so much. All right, we'll see you later.